Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Heal Profoundly and Enduringly. I'm excited to be here with you on this Monday after a holiday here in the U.S. I'm excited to introduce Kat. She's going to be chatting with us today about healing with the power of the heart. And if you haven't been here for a while or you're new to the show, this is really all about get out your pen and paper, make this time for you. This is an opportunity to gather resources and tools so that you can feel empowered to heal yourself and to make connections with other heart-centered leaders and coaches, therapists, et cetera, so that you can find somebody that you feel really safe with if you want support on your journey. So today we have Kat Gray. She is a holistic quantum energy healer, mindfulness and soul alignment coach, designer, space energy clearer and harmonizer, and intuitive guide. Three years ago, she woke up in the middle of the night to a voice very succinctly and directly delivering her earth mission. Heart Powered Living was born shortly after that. I love those stories. It's so exciting. Kat believes that each client is unique and each experience is personalized to exactly what is needed for their healing and evolution. Her hope is that humanity can reestablish to lost connection to our hearts and shift into the higher consciousness we came here to embody. Beautiful. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. I'm so yes. happy to be here. <laughs> Me too. Kat and I have been chatting. We had so much drama in both of our lives, right? That it was like trying to find a time it's to the do the same this. drama, water, water damage in the house. And we're not the only ones. Everyone I talk to is having the same thing. It's like homes overflowing with emotion. Yes. Exactly. That's what I keep saying. I'm like, there's just too much emotion. We're overflowing. Yes. <laughs> So funny. So I always start this show off the same way, which is asking, what is that one thing that you feel is necessary to heal profoundly and enduringly? Well, of course, I'm going to have to say the heart <laughs> because the heart really is um, one of our greatest um, healing tools. It is our connection to um, our higher consciousness, our higher selves, um, to the wisdom of the universe. And once we can um, reestablish that connection by quieting, learning how to quiet the mind and amplify the voice of the heart and amplify that connection is when we can really get on track for true healing and have the tools to become our own um, coaches, healers, um, masters of energy, because the guidance is within and um yeah so i'm i'm really excited to talk about all the all the things heart related and mindfulness related and all share share as many tools as i can with um with the viewers thanks sure. again for having me you're so welcome so talk i love how you just used the phrase voice of the heart can you explain what that is and what that means to people who might not know so okay this is this is one of the foundation things that I that I teach to all of my all of my clients, all of my all of the people I work with. And it's a really easy analogy. And I find that spirit likes um, to speak in analogies because um, they stick with us in our minds. And when we are in difficult situations, those analogies, we remember them and it's like, oh, that's what it is. Yes, I get it. So here it is. Here's, imagine yourself, your body, um, your physical vehicle is an actual car and you're riding in the car in, um, in this winding road of life. And in the car, you have a passenger and the passenger is the part of your mind, a very pes pesky passenger that likes to give commentary, that likes to criticize, that likes to see themselves as a victim, that likes to judge and point out what everybody else is doing wrong, that is very, very afraid, afraid of making the wrong decision, afraid of being judged, afraid of, afraid of not making it in life and um, failing and all of these other things. Let's call it the ego. It's the word that a lot of us are familiar with. Um, and then you have a satellite above. You have a satellite. We're going to call it the higher self, the higher consciousness. And in your car, you have your GPS. The GPS, um, which is your heart. In your physical body, the GPS is the heart. 
So your GPS speaks with the voice of Alexa, Siri, whatever the car manufacturer's voice. And that voice is the voice, it's the guidance system that speaks from the higher self. The higher self has a bird's eye view of everywhere you have been, all the multitude of ways that you could go. Um, and it sees you as you are in the present and the pesky passenger on the side. So the voice that is coming through is wise. It is a voice of love. It is a voice that is here to encourage you to, um, to go on your journey towards, um, yes, learning some of the difficult lessons you came here to learn, mm -hmm. but ultimately to get on your highest timeline so that you can have the most expansive and joyful and peace and love filled life. So that voice comes through when the passenger is quiet, when the ego, when the limiting beliefs that are running, the, the you know, all the, all the things that our mind is really good at um, throwing our way, um, the heart voice starts coming through then. And it can come out in intuitive downloads, in hits, in different um, clear senses, right? And soon enough, after after you um, you learn to quiet that passenger and turn the vol volume up on the GPS, you begin to experience the higher self voice, the voice of the GPS taking over the voice of the pesky passenger, mm -hmm. and um, and that really is what heart powered living is about. It is putting the heart, the GPS, the guidance system in the driver's seat, in the seat, um, in the passenger seat that that allows for the fear-based narrative and all of the other junk that is not, um, you know, some fear is good in life, but not the, not the stuff that really keeps us small and stuck. And um, as we go through the journey of becoming more, um, going through our healing, going through the, um, the mindfulness journey of learning how to quiet the mind, how to figure out why we're having those narratives, um, what, what is there to be healed. Um, and we begin to embody that, that voice more and more. So yeah. I know that was a really long <laughs> explanation uh, to your question but the heart voice is ultimately that um intuitive wise conscious all-knowing um voice that we all have access to it's just we got disconnected from our hearts we closed our hearts we 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 were led to believe that hearts are these hallmark card type useless things that the logical mind needs to be in the driver's seat and um, that, that to me could not be further from the truth. Logical mind is amazing, um, but the heart really is here to provide us the most um, amazing guidance from source, from universe, from creator, whatever word you resonate with. So, yeah, no, I love that so much. And, and I think, you know, the ego is a great executor. You know, like it's like, mm -hmm. all right, allow this, this voice to come up from our hearts and from our intuition and from source, and then allow the ego to, to implement it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's why our egos are helpful in this mm -hmm. world because yeah, they do serve a purpose, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just, it, we, we get so caught up in the chatter. And I think when you were talking about like the, we forget about our hearts, like our heart, it's almost like we shut them out. We shut them down. And that, that's what I see is one of the biggest issues in humanity is this guarding of our hearts because of experiences we've had or because of fear-based living, like you said. And, um, and I think that we walk around with these walls up. And so we're not able to see all of the love that's placed in front of us and the opportunities that are placed in front of us because, because we're guarded. Mm -hmm. And really, when you ask someone, what kind of friendship do you want to have? What kind of romantic relationship do you want to have? One of the first things, well, when you dig deeper, right? One of the first things that we all want is vulnerability, is to be seen, to be heard, to be accepted, to be, um, and it's that vulnerability. And when other people show that softness, show their true 
hearts, emotions, their true, you know, they, they allow that shield to, um, to come down. That's, that's what we all want. That's, that's the part of humanity that we are all so deeply desiring. And yes, what you said about the ego being the executor, and it is needed, it is part of who we are, it is part of part of our design. But it's, it's, it needs to listen to the guidance of the heart and not be um, the pesky passenger. Like there is a role it can play when it is on board. And my guides say, you can seduce the ego with the beauty of what the vision that the heart paints. Mm. Um, so um, yeah, but it's hard being human. I think it's so important to acknowledge it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. And I think that's why you talk about creating your own healing path, right? Mm -hmm. And and healing modality when when you're ready to step into being yeah. of service, you know, being of service to yourself, being of service to the universe. And so I, I I would love if you could talk about that a little bit, actually, just this idea that that it is important to cultivate your own path. Cause I'm a big believer of the same thing. Cause we're all different and yeah. we all have a different formula that we need to, to execute our purpose. Yeah. The, the belief that there's only one way, one healing modality, there's only Reiki or there's only sound or there's only somatic or there's only breath work or only meditation is so, I mean, the world is changing, right? We are rising in frequency. We are all so different and we all have different gifts and talents and um, the, um, the inclination we might have towards something that is a clue towards exactly what the medicine that we might need. And we all need different medicine, just as we all have different clear abilities. Some of us can hear clearly. Some of us can um, just feel in the body. We just feel energy and we may not have the visions, right? And it is about um, trusting, well, trusting the guidance system, but also learning discernment in um, in what is the right thing for me? What is the right thing for me to try? What is as a, um, as a client? Um, and what is, um, who is the right, um, the right healer for me or the right guide or mentor or coach, right? And it's might not be somebody who has 100,000 followers on Instagram. It might be somebody who has 20, right? And that discernment from feelings, I work with my clients to to teach that it is truly through feeling in your body that a lot of a lot of us learn to well what's your what's your body saying and it's like oh well it's not my logical mind i have to use at this point you know a lot of the time it is the healing path is not logical it is not linear it is not um so when we do feel um an inclination towards trying something and we try it it's like my guides say, what you have tried and what has worked for you can become and probably will become part of your medicine that you share with the world. Yeah. So the more we try, and we don't have to spend a lot of money, we can go and group things, we can do um, online things, you know, there is um, discounted rates for different healers, like there's, there's ways to make this work without spending a fortune on it. Yeah. Um, and, um, and when we try things and we, and it's working and we continue evolving, something stops working, we move on to a different thing. You know, it's like, it's the releasing that tight grip that there's only one way to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and once you have tried the different things and you sit with it and it's like, this has worked for me. And I love the energy of this teacher. I'd love to learn the modality from them. You know, it's kind of, and that's how you fall into that flow of, of the becoming a healer, of becoming um, a mentor for somebody else. It's following the smooth path of, well, sometimes not so smooth, <laughs> but um, yeah. So yeah. you get to design your own journey and you get to have fun with it. So. Yeah. See, that's what I love about this message that you're sharing so much is that it gets to be this fun, curious, like 
exploratory adventure, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and that we have patience and compassion for with ourselves, because I think a lot of time we can, what I see is that people will set an agenda and they'll say, okay, I'm going to go get this certification, or I'm going to go learn this modality and stack them all up. And they can do it out of a fear-based space. They can do Mm -hmm. it out of, I need to prove myself. I need to get to a certain point where really it's about, you know, no, it's just a process of uncovering what's meant for you. It's a process of uncovering what feels really natural and organic and part of really the the best way to magnify and project your essence in this world. Mm -hmm. Because I remember for a while, you know, I started out with the, with Reiki and then the emotion code and the Akashic records. And I remember for a while, I was just talking about the Akashic records that that was my primary focus. And then I realized that I was almost getting lost in that a little bit because I was so focused on teaching about the Akashic records rather than, you know, I am not the Akashic records. Yes, we all have them. Right. But like, I have all sorts of different facets of my being that are meant to come together. And the Akashic records is just one tool that I like to use. Right. And so it's being able to navigate that path with patience and knowing I'm going to, I'm going to know, I'm going to have more clarity as time goes on. And for some people being an Akashic Records reader and teacher, and that's their sole life purpose and mission, that's totally fine. But but so many of us are like, we're multifaceted. We've had other careers in the past that we got burned out or bored at, and we don't want to do one thing. So when you read my bio, I'm sure some people were like, wait, like how is all this stuff related? But it really is. And that's what I try to tell people is, um, I used to be, I used to work in um, marketing, business development, uh, left that and got trained as a jeweler and had a jewelry business. And then another jewelry company that I ended up selling. And now I'm, I said, I never want to do that again. Well, I'll never say never. I am back to working with it because I realized back then I didn't know about, I've been around crystals my whole life. My grandfather was a jeweler and I worked with crystals in the jewelry company and I'm now coming back to it and creating jewelry from a totally different Mm. space and consciousness. And it all, it's all coming and weaving together because, you know, some of the clients I work with, it's like, I know they need this particular crystal and I could just see them and I can see the necklace that I'm supposed to make for them. And it's, it's just all flows. And that's, that's what, if your heart could speak, your heart would say, can't you just have fun with it <laughs> let go of this control and trust that it will all unfold and it will all be fun and yes maybe all the certifications that we fear based uh, from the fear based um mind we we went and got they will um amass to something but maybe they won't and that's okay and that's where the compassion and acceptance and the the mindful approach to it comes right And it's also to learning and saying, well, you know, I did that meditation teacher training, but like, yeah, I don't want to be a meditation teacher, Mm -hmm. but I did learn how to, how to, um, one meditate myself Mm -hmm. and two, I, I now know how to pace myself and I can record one off meditation when, when the inspiration comes. So it's all, it was all for a reason, right? It was all lessons. Um, But hopefully sooner than later, we come to the, to that realization that um, we created this experience to experience flow, to experience ease and to experience joy. And there is a way to align to that experience and not push so hard. And, yeah. and trust in the timing and divine timing. They always say divine timing, divine timing. And you're like, oh. <laughs> I know it's so irritating. And, and, and I just think it's so funny that you're bringing this up. Cause I literally just had a conversation with my husband about this, this weekend around, you know, the fact that I've been a therapist for 20 years. And when I let, when I closed my traditional therapy business, I was like, Nope, away from mental health. No, 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 no. And the pendulum went all the way this way. And I was just like, no, I'm an Akashic queen. That's it. I want nothing to do with the mental health world. Right. And then spirit kept whispering this holistic mental health thing into my ear that I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to touch that. And it was about kind of coming back and allowing that pendulum to settle somewhere around. Yeah. Like I am meant to 
speak for and advocate for holistic mental health. And that includes spirituality and that includes energy work. And, you know, it includes all of that because that's what I believe is part of our holistic nature. But, um, but yeah, it's so normal to, to, to kind of swing this way. And I love that you're just allowing the jewelry inspiration to come in as it's meant because it's like the perfect marriage. And even, um, my team member, she is, she does spirit art, you know, and she's always been an artist. And then she went all the way to mediumship. And then she's like finding her middle ground around mediumship yeah. and, and doing spirit art. And I'm unique, like, it's so beautiful. Her unique medicine, her unique expression. And that's what, when you were talking about your, the pendulum swinging and the, the, um, all I kept hearing was like, you can only deny your gifts for so long because you yeah. do have a gift as a therapist, as a space holder. Yeah. And it was like, you had to, you know, it's like, I'm not, I'm going to shed that identity. I'm going to shed that identity. That's <laughs> not me. That's not me. And then you were like, but it is part of who I am. And it feels really good when I yeah. get the way that I think about it. Yeah. It's, and that's when I say, I tell people like spirit has such a, such a good sense of humor about yeah. all of this, because they're like, you're like our children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, it's, um, they try to redirect us and like with all the signs and when we are, when we are in, in a good balanced energy, like all the synchronicities start happening and they're like, keep going, keep going. She's doing it. She's doing it. Yeah. It's so that's, um, I love your story of how, how it's all coming and it's not over yet. That's what people no. understand is that this is just it will keep evolving. And in mm -hmm. 10 years, it might be something totally different. You might be living in a forest in Costa Rica, hosting retreats at some, you know, at a, at the facility that you have, and that will be it. Like, see, that's, what's so freaking hilarious about this is that that's the other thing that came for, like, as we were driving back from our Thanksgiving trip was like, I was dreaming bigger. And what's hilarious is that so I host about four retreats. I'm hosting four retreats this year. And, um, I said to my husband, I was like, I want, I want multiple locations. Like I want a location in the Pacific Northwest in the middle of the woods. I want a location in Sedona, Arizona. I want a location in up in the, um, the Northeast, you know, and I'm just imagining all of these places that that I adore and that give me different vibes. You know, they're, they're different vibes, but there's ley lines there that just activate mm -hmm. me and activate the spiritual energy. And, and it's just so cool that at the same time that we can feel a little bit like, oh my gosh, where am I going? And what am I doing following this heart-centered guidance? Then you start to dream even bigger and you start to see how this gets to continue to expand and become something that you're like, consistently surprised about like yeah. oh my gosh even more yay yay yeah. and that's what the guidance is always about it's always about dream allow yourself to dream and dream bigger and it's and you will be surprised that maybe you will evolve out of this particular dream but it will come out to be something bigger and better than you were envisioning yeah. and again our job is not to get fixated on but how, what are the logistics of the Sedona retreat space? Like, is it an Airbnb? How am I going to make money when it's not rented out? Am I going to rent it out to like, just the person who is going to be an example of exactly what you are wanting to do might come into your awareness field, or you might go yeah. and stay at one of those things. Like it mm. will all in divine time. Mm. <laughs> and it's, it's about becoming really comfortable with where you are. And if you are not comfortable, then sitting with that, why am I not comfortable? Like, what is, what is the discomfort? Like, how can I shift this? What, what needs to be healed and cleared around this, right? Um, our discomfort is always an invitation for more healing. For more. Oh, always, always. always. So funny, because I was feeling really uncomfortable, I think it was a couple of days ago. And I, I went into that space of, I know that my subconscious is getting something out of this. Like, mm -hmm. I know that it's enjoying this to a degree and there's a pleasure in this. And so I was like, how am I benefiting from this? Like, let me just, and I just started like to dance with it. And I was like, let me just start to move my body and just dance and be like, yeah, I'm just going to be with all of it and just love the fact that I feel like shit right now. <laughs> like, I'm just going to love it. And it just moves through. Like, it's unbelievable how, when you take that perspective, 
it does become something playful and it does become something that's really powerful. Yeah. Well, energy wants to move. Energy doesn't want to sit stuck. Yep. All of it, all of it is, um, wants to be playful, wants to be joyful, wants to be dancing, wants to be breathing, wants to be, um, yeah. And it's easy to remember that when we are in like high vibration states, but when we are in the thick of it and they like, they're really like, you know, dragged down by the difficult um, emotions and thoughts and trauma and all this stuff, like, how do you, how do you remind yourself then that it's like, I can shift this. And that's where it's like that connection that we have with the higher guidance. It's, it's like the lifeline is always there. Um, it's always there. Mm-hmm. We're never alone. Never. It's like we like to think that we're alone and separate and create identities and create labels and, but we're never alone. We are, mm-hmm. we're working our way back to oneness, to remembering that while we play here while we play yes. <laughs> yes. I mean that's really that's really it and I know it's so hard to hear when you're in the thick of it but um if you can only just like inch by inch keep moving towards and realigning yourself with that guidance and um and that's really for me that when when you talked about um how in the middle of the night I was woken up and um spirit started talking about what I was here to do and it was funny because it was not at all what I had ever expected it was about um helping well helping others open their hearts reconnect to the heart guidance which I was like heart really no I'm not even naming my business heart anything nope 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 um and they said you're going to use mindfulness tools to assist in connecting um to intuition to calming the mind and everyone needs this right now the mothers need it the children the teenagers the husbands like like the family need this right now and it's like mindfulness (laughs) (laughs) I hear you I was like can I just have a different mission and they were like no and you're going to remember who you are and embody that energy and become that heart-powered being and and I was like heart powered and I started googling it I was like what what and you know I did not name my business that I uh, named it inner recast because I was like it's about inner transformation and sure enough three months later I ended up renaming it because they were like what are you doing child when are you gonna start Uh, listening uh, (laughs) yeah yeah but um and that's what I I tell people when it's how, how do I begin? How do I begin? It's like, become the observer of your mind, the simplest, become the watcher, increase your self-awareness of what's happening inside. When you feel yourself drifting into course, correct, reconnect with your heart Mm -hmm. and with a vibration of love, with that true, the vibration of life, with a vibration of earth. It's, um, yeah, because that's the vibration of the heart. Like truly, that is the vibration of the universe, the vibration of Gaia, of earth. Um, And we're meant to vibrate at that frequency. Exactly. And I remember when I first started this journey that I would have, I must have had 12 to 15 reminders going off on my phone all day, every day to keep reminding me to come back to my heart, to keep reminding Mm -hmm. me to come back to center, to connect to source, to ask for help, to ask for support, to, Mm -hmm. to take a breath, right? Like it could have been 30 seconds of just closing my eyes and taking a breath and just connecting to that core of me. Mm -hmm. But I think that we, we do get into these patterned habitual ways of being, and it's so self-loving to rewire that and Mm -hmm. to recenter ourselves. Yeah, because we are working towards becoming more conscious, awake and aware to what's happening within and around us, more mindful, more intuitive, more loving, more connected, more intentional with what we put in our bodies, with the news, with the, you know, whatever we are, with the people, with the relationships, with the work that we do, how we spend our energy. And it's, it's, it's designing your life to to align with your heart, to align with who you want to be, because that's how you're going to create that um, 
that retreat here, retreat there, or whatever, you know, whatever, um, have the life that you want, or a partner or friendships or work connections or whatever it is. So it's, I know it sounds like a lot to someone who's just beginning their journey. And it's, um, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of, you know, it's so easy to fall into the trap of becoming that seeker and just seeking and consuming. And I know it, that was my, that was my personality. That is my default state to fall into when I'm not in my heart is to be the controller is to be the, I can learn more. I I can figure this out. I can white knuckle it. Mm -hmm. And you don't get any, well, you do get somewhere, but it's not where you really want to be. Like well, yeah, say, and then you're also burnt out and depleted. Yeah, oh my gosh, I know that. <laughs> sold my sold my business because I got burned out, and now when I think about it, I'm like, why did I why did I not find a different way of doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so with you. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, burnout. Burnout is, but it was also a wake up call. You know, yeah. it's like when you look at it, look back at it. Yeah, it was a wake up call. It put me on my healing path. First with my health, taking charge of working through Epstein-Barr, the adrenal fatigue, when when my doctors were looking at me saying, you're fine, it's just a virus, it's just a cold. I've had this cold once a month for the last 10 years. What do you mean? And yeah, and um, that's a story you hear over and over. A lot of the time, the body is the one that gives us that like, you're done you're done. What do you think you're doing here? You want to get better? Like change, (laughs) make change. I know. And it's that brave change we need to make. So, okay. So yes, it is. It's very overwhelming for people who are starting this journey because it's like how, and and all I have to say is like consistency and patience with yourself, you know, just open up a little bit of space each day and there don't have to be rules around it, but Um, Is there a tool that you can share before we close up today that people can start implementing to play with? Yeah. So um, the first thing I would say is beginning to become the observer and the watcher of the mind. And um, Eckhart Tolle is like the best teacher for for that. Um, One of his, well, both of his books, if any, if if you are a speaker wanting information, if, if, um, you're not familiar with Eckhart Tolle, I would say go read his books because really that's, that's um, the foundation of mindfulness, the foundation of being present, um, present with yourself and observing, observing your, your thoughts. So once you are doing that, um, my guides say the mixed love tape is what they call it is the, the best tool for, um, for heart connection. And there's a lot of ways we can connect with the heart. We can do it through visualization. We can do it through breathing through the heart. But the best way, in my opinion, and from from my guides, is to feel the vibration of love, to feel the heart just vibrating and allowing it to go through your body. And we need to feel the emotion of love for that. So the way the mixed love tape exercise works is, you close your eyes and you um, imagine that it's your last day on earth. And on this day, you get to review all the highlights of your life when you felt the most at peace, the most in love, the most just so in awe of this world, of this experience. And it might be revisiting your favorite places in nature. It might be learning to ride a bike and looking at your parents' face and them beaming with pride. It might be a hug a loved one gave you. It might be just that that moment when you learn to love yourself a little more. And so it's the most heart-expanding, heartfelt moments. And you create a highlight reel of that. And you connect to that whenever you are feeling out of out of whack. (laughs) And for me, the vision that comes through is my favorite vision is my daughter sleeping and the dog on top of her and her just like holding the dog. And when I see that vision, it's like my heart just like swells with love and I feel the vibration of love. Mm -hmm. And that's, you're like, when you can connect to that, hold that frequency, hold that frequency. 
And I love what you said about um, setting timers. I also tell my clients to create anchors. So a hard anchor might be a song where you feel like you cannot be not in vibration of love when you're listening to the song. So like for me, Peace Train by Cat Stevens is one of those, or it's a spray with essential oil. So when you smell rose or you smell jasmine, it's like your heart is like, I'm in my heart. Or maybe it is a rose crystal that you um, program to be your heart anchor. It connects you to your heart. Um, so it's creating those tools for yourself, um, building a toolbox that when, when you observe something going, uh oh, here I am getting dragged down by the passenger, you can play that image. I'm, I'm in the vibration of love. What is what can I do now that's going to continue on this path of this vibration and ask for help? Like you were saying, they're always willing. They're always there. They're always open to help. We just need to we just need to ask. So. So, so I love that. Yeah, it's, it's, I love that exercise so much. And I'm going to do it again when I have more space and give myself a lot of space yeah, for it. You don't need guidance. You could just do it yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And um, Laura is asking here, she's saying when she opens up her heart, she finds she gets hurt more often. What would you say to somebody who feels that way and is, is hesitant because of that? Hurt more often. I wish she was, she was online. And we could I know. <laughs> <laughs> hurt more often in a way that, um, that is like, romantic relationships or friendships um what what kind of what kind of experiences happen um I feel like we need a little a little more more context but I also yeah. think I also think that to me that's a sign of a need for firmer boundaries and clearer yeah. boundaries and and more solid confidence and alignment in who you are because for me it's like I can open up my heart. Like I'm, I'm, I'll tell anybody anything, you know, like I'm a complete open book. And so the only way that I'm going to get hurt or rejected or harmed is if there's something within me that isn't fully confident and rooted in what mm -hmm. I believe in and what I'm following. Right. Yeah. And so like when it comes up, it's kind of like, well, that means that I was dependent on that person for, right. for X, right, Y, right. or Z. That means that was waiting. Allowing, if you're allowing the rejection or judgment of somebody else or abandonment or something to affect you, you're not rooted in your sense of self. It's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. The part of the journey is getting to the place where I am who I am and I know who I am and I'm proud of who I am. And I love myself so deeply that, that the fear of judgment, the fear of getting affected by somebody else is no longer there. It is neutralized. It is, it is removed from the, from the picture. Um, so I would, it's, but also here's the thing. We do attract experiences, right? Based yeah. on our vibration, based on what we still need to heal and learn. So if there is a pattern to the painful experiences, to the, um, to the hurt that happens, maybe there is a lesson in exactly that. Maybe there is a narrative, a belief that needs to be healed and um, really just staring at it. Like, what is it? Is there a pattern to it? Because a lot of these things do have patterns. Well, and, and it's funny because it's not like an egoic searching and an analysis of like what the pattern is. It's more like, okay, I know there's a pattern here, which means that I am attracting this, which means that yes. it is benefiting me and it is serving a purpose. Yes. And so I'm going to appreciate yes. that it's here. And, and what is this serving in me? How is this yes. benefiting me? Right. Because it's so funny. There's, there's this, a scenario that kept coming up in my life. And I remember my coach saying to me, she was like, well, that means that your energy field is open to it. Mm -hmm. You know, if your energy field weren't open to that, and it were a very firm, no, I'm not available for that. And you were solid in it. It wouldn't show up. Yeah. So it's either deciding I'm not available for this and I'm going to consistently remind myself of that and not allow it in, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's still serving me some way and I need to appreciate and accept it and extract that before I can right. move forward. But also if that lesson really is needed, for example, if the hurt comes from being um, betrayed in some way, right. And if we are, we create the boundary and we block ourselves to it, 
I feel like it might still find a way to show up in other scenarios because there is um, there is something there energetically that needs to be. Um, mm. And we keep attracting the same things and different masks and different people and different situations. You know, it might not be through the boss. It might be through through a loved one or a best friend or something. Um, but I, I also find that when you, it's not about necessarily that those things happen when you open your heart. It just, it happens because you are opening yourself up to more healing and more growth and mm. that a lot of the time comes with mm. painful experiences I really love that you just added that in because I think that's so important is that sometimes yeah we are going to feel the crap when mm. we start to open up right and that's a good thing because it means it's ready to get the hell out like it's like I don't want to be here anymore I'm ready to be transmuted into something else I'm ready to be released I don't want to be stuck and if it's coming up, that means it doesn't want to be stuck. Yes. So yeah, I really love that. And like allowing that. You, if something, it's like, there is like a shadow or there is like something, you know, like it's like an irritant being like, yeah. on a wound, you know, um, yeah. um, so it's it, everything, seeing everything as an opportunity for healing and expansion is really and having that compassion, okay, yes, I, this sucks. This person really hurt me. Um, but what is what do I do next? How do I how do I grow from this? How do I? Um, I'm not going to shut down. You know, the, this is not what I'm not going to put a barrier, a, a heart protection. I'm going to stay open because my goal is to embody love, is to hold the vibration of love, and the laws of the universe say you will be given more of that. And maybe the people did need to fall, fall away. Maybe that was the time that you needed to see that the reason why they're hurting you is probably because they are hurt people themselves and they need to be on their journeys, right? Like we just, we don't know. It's, it's so, so complex and trying to figure it all out is like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming comfortable with not knowing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly that. Exactly. And trusting that it's happening, that our job is to stay open, to stay, to be love. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful. the only way, really. It is. It's, 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 it's we, really the only way. <laughs> yes. 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 So friends, I dropped Kat's links here. I dropped her website, heartpoweredliving.com and her Instagram at heartpoweredliving. And I know we ran over today. Thank you for being here and just staying with us, Kat, because I just love to follow the flow and, and allow whatever needs to come forward, come forward. So I appreciate you giving us extra time and anybody who is resonating with Kat's energy. I always encourage you to reach out. Everybody who comes on the show is so open to receiving your feedback, your reflections, your, oh my gosh, this resonated, but I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where to mm -hmm. start you know, just reach out and start a conversation. It's just a chat between two humans. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, there doesn't have to be anything that comes out of that, right? Like there's no pressure. It's just getting curious, following your curiosity, following the vibe, right? Like what we've been talking about today. So thank you so much for joining us here. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. It was my Bye, pleasure. everybody. I will see you on the next episode of Heal Profoundly and Enduringly and reach out if you need us. Bye.